Hello, today we're going to be taking a look at different types of memory in dementia. Dementia is characterised by a deterioration of brain cells. The most noticeable deterioration in many types of dementia is to memory. However, dementia is not a global memory disorder, meaning it doesn't affect all memory the same. Working as a carer in dementia, you'll notice this when a person can't remember what they had for breakfast, but can remember the day they met their wife, or can't remember the name of a tune, but can play it on a guitar. So why is this? Memory is not just one function. We can split memory into different groups, with different types of information being remembered and stored in different ways, in different parts of the brain. So what are some of these types of memory? All memories start off with our sensory system. We use each of our senses to remember what we see, hear, smell, taste and touch, and how we feel. These are all interconnected, so we can take all these pieces and combine them into one memory. Sensory memory only lasts for about half a second, so the memory either decays or moves to the next type of memory, which is short-term memory. Short-term memory is what it says on the tin, this is where recent information is processed and stored. This is where you store a phone number right before you dial it, or how you remember the conversation you're currently having. Short-term memory can only store information for a brief period of time. So again, the memory will either decay or move to the next store, which is long-term memory. We can split long-term memory into three groups, episodic, semantic and procedural. Episodic memory is your memory of events. Much like episodes of a TV show, this is where the episodes of your life are stored, like your first day of school, your wedding day, and the holiday you took last year. Semantic memory is where we keep facts and knowledge, like what the capital of France is, when your birthday is, and who the Prime Minister is. Procedural memory is where we store information on how to do things. These are things we do so often and have done so many times that they become automatic. So walking, cycling, reading, playing an instrument are all stored in our procedural memory. So how do we retrieve these memories? We recall or by recognition. We can think of this like different types of questions in an exam. You could have a fill in the blank question like, what is the capital of France? And you could use recall to remember Paris or you could have a multiple choice question and recognise the answer as Paris. We can also use our senses for recognition. Because they are all interconnected, a smell or a song that we recognise can retrieve the whole event and all the other senses associated with it. So here is the journey of a memory through the different stores. So what happens to these types of memory in dementia? Most commonly, people with dementia suffer damage to their short-term memory and their ability to use free recall. This means new memories can't pass through the short-term store to the long-term memory. Essentially, no new memories can be made and they all decay, but old memories can still be retrieved in some way. Let's take our man who can't remember breakfast, but can remember the day he met his wife. Because of damage to his short-term memory, he can't store what he's had for breakfast, and it decays, but his older memory of his wife has already been stored, so he can retrieve it. Episodic memories can be particularly well retrieved if they are important or emotional, such as this one. This lady can still remember how to play guitar. This is because procedural memory is still intact. Procedural memory tends to be particularly well preserved in dementia. However, she couldn't remember the name of the song. This could be due to issues with free recall. If someone offered suggestions for the name of the song, she may be able to recognize it. As the disease progresses, it becomes harder to retrieve all types of long-term memory and people with dementia will rely on these sorts of cues more. By stimulating the senses that are likely to be associated with an event and offering prompts, people are more likely to recognise something that triggers a memory. It is important to be mindful when attempting to trigger memories that bad memories can be remembered just as well as good ones, like loss. So how can we take all this information and apply it to care? 
The trick is to take advantage of the memory stores and retrieval techniques that remain and create activities that only draw on these stores. Activities such as listening to music, aromatherapy and hand massage only rely on sensory memory and a person's ability to experience the here and now. This can be enjoyed even up to the very later stages of dementia. Stimulating the senses can also work as a prompt for recognition of long-term memories. Therapies such as reminiscence therapy aim to trigger memories in this way by presenting people with multi-sensory memorabilia which may be associated with a memory from their younger years. Other therapies such as yoga therapy, dance therapy and art therapy aim to take advantage of procedural memory. These have the added bonus of encouraging exercise and emotional expression. As you can see, there is still some memory left in dementia and activities you can do that people at any stage of the disease can enjoy. We hope you can use this information to come up with activities of your own. Thanks for watching.